Okay, in this video it's a little dark, but hopefully you can see I have a homemade lantern there. It's basically a uh, tin can candle lantern. I'm not sure what the official name for it is. They're just homemade lanterns meant to be uh, powered, if you want to say that, by candles or small oil lamps inside. You use a can, either a soda can or a food can like I'm using there as the uh, casing which also acts as a reflector. I got a few notes I will mention on its construction and all that stuff here. I will try to put links in the video or in the uh, description to this video links to uh, different types or styles that you can do using cans. Uh, there was one that I came across called a bush torch or something like that, which basically is a kind of almost a floodlight or flashlight using a candle in a number 10 can. And I'll also try putting in a link or two on uh, making candles. So first off here, I'm going to get light turned back on. And then blow out my lantern here. Now the materials used, I used a uh, juice can. This particular one is one that I had sitting on a pile for getting used in the garden. That's why I cut the top off. Otherwise I would leave the top on the can. I would not remove it. There is a baling wire here which is what the uh, handle is fashioned from which you can get at uh, hardware stores and that and your uh, farm fleet uh, type uh, stores that you'll find out in the country. We have a candle inside and I will make the note on the candle. Try to watch the length so it does not go above the uh, top height of your opening. I made that mistake. It makes it a pain in the butt when you're trying to light it. Now, I tried using a can opener or P38 to make my uh, seams here for cutting it open. Did not work. So I ended up just having to continue with using the multi-tool. Use the uh, blade on it, the knife to uh, do the cuts. But first off, you're going to go through, use a marker of some type, and trace out where your cuts are going to be. I followed one of these uh, ridges, went to almost halfway on each side, and then one top, one bottom. I tried to go a little bit lower on the bottom, and then find a place in here to make your vertical seam for making your little wings. Then go through, use the knife, punch the holes, four holes for your corners. And you can use the knife, if you're careful enough, and cut open the metal to make your uh, top seam, bottom seam, and then I did the vertical. Go through and do your holes for your handle using a knife also on both sides. Do as best as possible to make sure that they are directly opposite each other. I used the pliers to make the crimp because this metal is going to be sharp. And you're not going to want to accidentally hit one of these cut edges, one of these seams, when you're trying to replace the replace the candle or you're moving around in the dark. Say you want to uh, close the wings a little bit or you want to open them up more. So go through, use the pliers, bend it over a little bit to start to make your crimp. 
and then use the pliers to completely press it down. If you want to, if you got the file on it, you could go over the top edge in case there's a little uh, sharp edges to uh, file them down. Then go through, cut a piece of wire for your handle, put it on the can, and then I found in order to keep the handle from falling down or falling out, take the inside little piece here, bend it over, so it's kind of captive in place. Now to put the candle inside and make sure it doesn't fall, I came across a video that showed on making these. Take your lighter, heat the bottom of the can, get it good and hot, it'll start smoking a little bit on the inside of the can. Uh, keep uh, heating it a little bit longer. Then take your candle, Squish it down in there, move it back and forth a few times, try to even out the bottom in case you had to cut it to get to the right length. And get it, you know, somewhat level on that stuff, somewhat straight up and down. And then what I ended up having to do, I had to blow on the uh, melted wax on the inside to get it to uh, harden. Let's see if we can get you a better picture with some light, hopefully and it holds it in place. This way I'm not making a hole in the bottom that any wax could drip through. I know in the uh, wilderness or bush torch or whatever video it shows them making a hole in the bottom and then feeding the candle from the bottom up inside as needed. But I, I'm just worried that some of the wax is going to drip through. At least this way the wax is all contained inside. And in theory, the paraffin or wax, if you use up the entire wick and you get a pool of it down in the bottom, you can chip that wax or paraffin out and use it to make a new candle. For reusing, obviously. Uh, if you're going to set this down on something like I have this rubberized uh, camping tarp here put some type of spacer underneath it before you set it down on something that's potentially flammable like the rubberized tarp here or some type of plastic so I used my uh, wire as my spacer I did that right after I had uh, melted the candle into place because the bottom's still going to be hot for a little bit and I didn't want to burn a hole. So, what could be the uses for something like this, you're probably wondering. Well, it has its uh, survivalist and prepper uses, obviously. You uh, lose electricity, you don't want to waste your batteries and that type of stuff. Well, this is a way you can make a lantern and somewhat have it safe inside so that you can still light an area. Uh, for militia operations, something like this could be something that would be used inside a sleep shelter, inside a bunker, inside a uh, tunnel system. I would not use this out in the open. No open light sources out in the open, especially a white light source, which is what this would be. A recommendation, which occurred to me after I made this, this can has a more of a golden colored interior. I would recommend the cans that you use have the silver interior. That will reflect more light. The gold tint on the inside just seemed to uh, swallow up a little bit too much light. I know it can reflect a lot more if it has the uh, same silver finish as the outside of the can. So what type of candles would you use inside? Basically whatever you get a hold of, whatever you have available. Now, as I mentioned, you could potentially use this as an oil lamp. If you don't already have one. Put the oil down inside. Have your uh, wick that goes down into the oil. Make sure that the oil is well below the lip here. Maybe make yourself a, a little wick holder using some wire or a piece of metal. 
put that inside run the wick into it make sure you get a decent little length above your holder make sure it's above the oil and uh, light the wick and it should draw the oil through the wick up to feed the flame as the wick gets lower use your uh, multi-tool to pull more of the wick up through the holder so you'll probably want to make sure that the holder down in the bottom is somehow fastened to the cam uh, maybe make it with wire and that stuff and make a hole in the bottom or a seam in the bottom run that holder up through it use some uh, wax to seal it from the inside most likely and you know that should in theory hold the uh, wick holder inside there and seal it off so no oil would drip through obviously doing this as an oil lamp would be a bit more dangerous than using the candles in it because you have a giant fuel source down in the bottom so who knows maybe you, at that time you'll want to cut out the top lid and use that as a little shelf here a little tray right over the top of your wick holder with the burning wick over the top of that and the oil down underneath and then when you need to refill the oil you just lift up on that lid have yourself a little edge that you can probably get a hold of lift it up check inside you know make sure your wick is out you put the flame out refill your oil lengthen your wick again and light it that's another possibility and something you can do what type of materials would you use for the oils uh, most of the oils I'm aware of that were used in oil lamps were typically fats fat oils from tallow and that type of stuff from animals but I've also heard of olive oils and other natural plant oils being used I think I've come across a reference once or twice about using uh, thinned out pine tar that something you know if you heat it right it'll work also in an oil lamp but I am not positive on that that might not work but it could be an experiment someone could work on so here you go just a basic little survival lantern you can hang it from the ceiling or carry it if need be you know make sure you got a good length on here and there you go pretty straightforward now for all my engineer brothers and the Patriot and Militia movements always remember essayons <laughs>